Hey, Coach, I'm super excited you found us on, on YouTube. Um, that's exciting for all of us. Uh, if you uh, like these kind of resources, make sure you go over and check out teachhoops.com um, up above. Great resource, 14-day free trial. Become a mentor, any, everything you would ever want to become a better coach. So go check that out. That's first thing. Second thing is make sure you subscribe. Go down below, make sure you subscribe, and you'll get all the updates and everything that kind of moves forward. So have a great day. Talk to you soon. And uh, if you want anything new, put it down below. Um, and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, episode 12 of High School Hoops. All right, what are we talking about this week, Coach? Well, Alan Iverson wouldn't really enjoy talking about this topic, <laughs> but we are going to be talking about how we start our practices as high school basketball coaches. Um, it, it can look a little bit different amongst the freshmen, JV, and varsity, but I really don't think that much in a sense because uh, there's some commonalities of what you can do to start your practice off. Um, Coach, do you want to start? Do you want me to start? Uh, Does it make I mean, I, uh, I can start. I'll start on this one. Uh, All right. Can, Sounds good. Um, so uh, I've, done, I've changed on this. So I used to um, – I used to kind of leave it free, free for them to come into the gym. You know, some kids are, I mean, everybody kind of wears ankle braces now. So it's kind of a slow process, but we have really moved toward having a pre-practice. Um, so when you get out of school and you get to the locker room, first of all, I know their schedule. So I kind of know when they can get down there and I'm, I have the, I have the blessing of being in the school so I can get down to the gym a little bit faster than maybe some of my assistant coaches. Um, but I think uh, we have started where we actually give them assignments to do in pre-practice where they're specifically working. You know, some guys will get on the shooting machine, the Dr. Dish and those kind of things. Some people will be working on their post moves. So we have assistant coaches that are working on specific things. And then some of my assistant coaches, I, and again, this is not for the freshman or sophomore coach that doesn't have the assistant coaches, but you can still set up pre-practices. It just takes a little bit more planning. You know, you can, you can break them up into pods and say, this pod is doing this, this, you know, this pod's working on free throws, this pod's work. So the reason is I'd like to make practices shorter as the year goes on. And if I want to do that, I got to get some skill work and things in earlier in the season. Um, and I wasn't able to do that, you know, and then I, maybe it's because I'm getting old and cranky and stuff, but I'd come in and they'd be just jacking threes and, working on, you know, all, the, all let's see if I can dunk with my eyes closed kind of crud, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, and it's like, okay, that's fine. If you got to stay in the locker room and gather yourself and you got to take 10 minutes to kind of get ready from school, it's like, it's like leaving work to go home. There's a transition there. I get it. You know, when I leave work and then I come and, and then I'm home, there ha that, that drive home is my transition. The, the kids need the exact same transition. I get that. Um, so I tell them is have it. You can ha you're in the locker room. You're getting changed. You're not coming from class right to the gym. I mean, you got to put your practice. You got to put your shoes on. All that kind of stuff. So that's your transition. Figure out well how much time and if you got to go to the bathroom and do that. But when you walk into the gym and those doors open and then you're in the gym, then we're then we're starting. Um, we're gonna work on specific things, tasks at that point. So that that's where my pre practice has kind of changed over time. Um, and part of that was, I think that I needed that transition from teaching to getting, and that, and that 10, 15 minutes was more my transition. So what I do now is I don't really come down to the gym until I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, so, you know, and, and luckily I've had, I have an assistant coach that was able to open the gym up. I'm not sure what, how that's going to change this year, but anyway, so how do you do yours coach? Oh, uh, well, I start every practice with dynamic stretching. Okay. So like yep. how we work. So that's even um, you. So when you get there and you, so you're not even talking about a pre-practice. So I was talking nope. about pre-practice. Okay. Right. So, so your first thing when you're there and you're hitting the ground running is a dynamic stretch. Always. Okay. It's, an, it's always, I, I think it's a great opportunity for them to get their talking out a little bit, yep. uh, to get their mind a little bit for me to get a uh, look over my practice plan, talk to my assistant coaches, make sure my manager's bringing out my clock, those type of things. I, I, I try to make it a little fun. Like um, I play music, you know, get some pumped up a little bit. I get some loose. It's a good way to get motivated. And that's, I always, I always start every, every practice with dynamic stretching. Okay. Um, when it comes to that, it, my mine has changed throughout the course of the years as well. Um, depending on what team I have, 
Um, I, I really like to start with something with passing or some type of sequence to get their ball and their hands warmed up. Yep. Uh, uh, so like a perfect passing, a star passing drill that leads to finishing, um, the Argentina passing drill, uh, one that we did this year at the college that we started every practice with, we would always do dynamic stretching to the speed drill, which is like a full court finishing drill. We tried to, as a team every day to get better at it. but that was our game that was our system so that made sense for us to start our, our our practices with that because it really set the tone for the day because that was just how we played basketball last season right um when i was uh my last season of coaching high school we didn't have a point guard we had a freshman point guard and we needed to learn how to take care of the basketball so my assistant coach always just led us in ball handling we just okay. always it was a it was a it was a a must for us every single day because we needed to work on it just because we didn't have a lot of good ball handlers. So we try to maximize that every kid could be able to handle the basketball through the course of the season. One thing fun that we did this year though, at the college and something you can think about is when you have a lot of off days, it's, it's really fun. We did a, a week of uh, team building finishing drills where one guy would be doing the finishing and everybody else was cheering him on, you know, well, it's time good, to yeah. take a little, uh, take a little break, uh, a little break within your uh, start of your practice and really, um, you know, get out the pads. And it was a different type of finishing drill each day. And you had 12 guys standing around there cheering them on as the other one, guy was going through the gauntlet. It was a good way to five, uh, 10 minute warm up, but it was fun. I, I mean, it was something I'm going to do every day, but there's sometimes in the season where you have lulls, where right. you have a week off. Maybe you want to do two team building drills or it doesn't even have to be basketball related. You could do right. something else within team building. I think it's a great way to start practice if you if you can as well. I, and yeah, in the last, wanna, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The last thing, uh, uh, start of the year is practice your warm up several times to maximize your time uh, in the, in uh, in the course of the start of a game. Uh, because uh, in the state of Wisconsin now, it's it's fifteen minutes, and man, does that go quick? It does. And, you know, you know, if you can teach them to be able to go from boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And you don't have to lead it because you got to get on there and you got to get your roster out there. You got to you got to get your mindset as a coach. You want to be talking to your assistant. Fifteen minutes goes really fast. It oh, is crazy fast. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm not a big. I'm not a big. It's, fan. It's, yet another. It's, it's almost. It's almost unco- It's it's it is. It is very uncomfortable for me still. I yeah. to to the fifteen minutes. I just I hate it. It's just not enough time. It's not. Um, nope. Nope. It'll go on my next year. website wia.com <laughs> slash let's get rid of them slash something i don't know (laughs) but you know when college you know you're you can get on the floor an hour beforehand you know know. your guys are your guys are ready man i just don't our high school guys need at least 20 minutes to warm up but that's just another debate that we can talk about later on yeah i i like that um i i i've thought about that a little bit we'll talk about that um i have a couple ideas but anyway um so I think one of the key components too, and I just talked about my pre-practice. I didn't even talk about my practice. Um, yep. I like I like getting them. Hopefully, they're semi warmed up when after their pre-practice. I like doing something that gets their juices flowing and changing it up, like some sort of full court, some sort of movement. Then we go do our dynamic. Then we come back. So I we're close. I, I just do mine a little different because I want the muscles yep. warmed before we go do the dynamic. Um, and they're kind of warm in the pre-practice, but they're really not sweating and moving. I want to do something where they're just, you know, they're going 80%. They're kind of moving. And then we go do our dynamic and then we get into practice. But I think the key is for all the coaches listening is it's really going to depend on your program and your kids and what you're going to do at the beginning of your practice. You know, you, you were reading your college team. Here's what we, here's what we needed after having long breaks, or here's what we needed for this. Um, and it goes again, I, I read my team like last year's team. We, this year's team is going to be a pretty good shooting team. Last year's team, we had a problem putting the ball in the hole. So we spent a lot of time in pre-practice in that as the season went along, getting shots up. How can we get reps? What kind of shots? What kind of shots are we getting in our offense? And those kind of things. So I think you, as as the coaches that are listening to this, you really got to think about your individual team. How are they going to use the pre-practice? the dynamic, the first couple things you do to get ready because you're setting the tone. It's like, it's like the quote unquote warm up when you do that in a classroom, you know, like when my kids walk into the math classroom, what are we doing to kind of get our brains working, 
what did we do yesterday? How are we, how are we kind of correlating it to the stuff that we're going to do today? I, I, I think you make a good point too about addressing your team is those things that you know you need to really work on. Make sure you start with those in practice. Because right. as the season goes on, if you save those for the end of practice and you're working with the scout team, that stuff is never going to get done. Because nope. you're, gonna have the, you're always going to have a plan and that stuff's going to get cut out at the end. Yep. So I think it's really important for our listeners to know you know, those couple things that you know you need to work on on a daily basis, have them in the start of the practice so you know you can get them done. Well, and I think that can be a future podcast too, Coach. I think yep. we should – I think maybe even in December or something, we should talk about practice planning. Obviously, yep. we can't do that that much of that in, you know, 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. But I, I no, think – a lot. I, it is a lot. And I think it would be better – than us talking about practice planning now when some people aren't into the season and aren't into the, you know, that post Christmas kind of, um, you know, what's going well with practice planning, what's not going well. I think that'd be something really good to talk about. Um, okay. So I, I wrote that down too. Good. Awesome. And I just put it on our, we, we have a Google shared thing that we're doing. So I, when you see me, when you, when you hear a pause or you hear typing, it's usually me like, Oh crud. Cause I'm old. And if I don't write yeah, but it down, that's why that's why I decided to help you out with the Google Docs. So you can just add as we're going. Yeah, it's we perfect. Have some really perfect. great ideas, and we forget about it. Now yeah, we can. It is. So I wrote the yeah, practice plan. Yeah, I think would we be can great. Keep that going, so that'll keep our show nice and fresh and ready to go. Yeah, and we start thinking of stuff. And if anybody has any ideas, down in the, you can send me an email at steve at teachhoops um, and I will definitely put it in. All right, coach. Until next week. All right. Thanks. All right. See ya. Hey, Coach, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're looking for more videos like that, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. 14-day free trial. I do not think you'll be disappointed.